hello. So for those of you on Twitch that might be confused, I'm going to do this over again. Because it appears I forgot to start recording. Greetings and salutations one and all. Welcome to another wonderful week. Siege of the Empire. It's episode 41. We're doing the intro a second time. Hello YouTube. Glad you could be here. Whew. Oh my god, we did it. That was amazing and uh, and stressful all at the same time. However, without further ado, let us go ahead and jump right on into it. Still waiting for a couple people to show up. Looks like we're a little slow here. Let me just say, hey, it's probably time to get in chat. Thanks. Uh, looks like Jackson. Jackson told me he might be a few minutes late, uh, which is fine. I don't know about Will, though. Uh, we're going to unmute, though. We'll, we'll just talk to Dalton and Megan for a few minutes and see how they're doing. Hello. I see two of you there. You are both muted. Hello. Ah, hello, Dalton. Um, so I don't know if you knew this or not, but apparently it's just going to be the three of us today. What? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know where everybody else is. Everybody's online, just not in the chat. They're all going to be dead. It's what they're going to be. Uh, basically, yes. Um, but hello, how are you, sir? Honestly, I'm a little tired, but that's due to, uh, me not getting much sleep today. What? My sleep has been off a little whack. Were you, so, were you restless? It was, I mean, a little bit. Uh, it's more of, like, my sleep has been off, so, like, I'll be waking up at, like, 8 o'clock in the afternoon. When I'm supposed to be waking up at two in the afternoon? Sure. And um, I I will I will just I'm just gonna say this. Uh, there is no eight o'clock in the afternoon. Because I don't think eight. that anyone considers eight p.m. to be afternoon time. I mean, it's technically afternoon. <laughs> technically. Correct. But it is we also just... <laughs> it is also closer to midnight than noon true but anyway uh yeah uh it's been uh been trying to like st like i took a quick nap and now i'm staying up like I'm probably gonna go to bed probably like three in the morning and crash that's, that's what i'm hoping for go okay. to bed a little earlier than normal so when i go into work tomorrow i don't die by staying up for Right, trying 24 to stay up plus hours. Sure, yeah, absolutely, I can understand that. For so, sure and for certain. Uh, currently just a little tired. But, uh, in other news, uh, my, uh, I'm doing, uh, LFG on Roll20 for my campaign. Oh yeah, so. that's exciting. What is the, well, for, for the people, what is your campaign going to be like? Because I'm aware. Uh, Yes, uh, it's it's Jordan's game, this game, but on roids. That's essentially it. That's literally it. It's when Dark Souls met Warhammer, made a love child. <laughs> thus, thus was born my campaign. That's what I'm going for. Perhaps it's a bit more akin to the traditional Warhammer world than than we play, and we play a bit more heroic. Yeah, uh, we play more of the Lord of the Rings Warhammer, which is yeah. fine. Uh, by all means. I mean, you, Which, can, you can still uh, die in a cave to Skaven, so. Or thugs. Or thugs. Or thugs, uh, yes. And, but, uh. That didn't even get her rolls. to unmute herself. I'm impressed. I know. Uh, I, think, I think she's getting drinks or snacks and whatever. But I went over the rules one last time. Next to my fear rule, because it made Ranger absolutely useless. No point in playing that class if. You're designed to hunt down monsters or be efficient at tracking them, and you're always scared of them. So it just didn't make sense. I as really, well as paladins. Out of all the rules you sent me, I liked that one the best. I mean, I did too, but uh, it definitely makes certain classes such as clerics, paladins, and rangers like, what the fuck? We're supposed to be good at what we're fighting. Why are we fearing them? Type of deal. Yeah, I mean, I mean which you could always is an offset advantage for them into that. Yeah, or yeah. I mean, it it would be it would be easy enough to like 
introduce a spell that gives you advantage against those kind of things, right? Like, yeah. and not really break the game too much. Right. Uh, but I instead came up with something else, uh, more of like a limiting factor on resting and things of that sort. As a, mm-hmm. not gritty realism, because fuck that. That 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 shit's like. I want to kill all it's, players as it, fast as possible. It's not but even. It's yeah, not even fun, really. Like, especially at low levels. Yeah. It's not even. It, like, just oh, yeah. it, it sucks. Yeah, the, the campaign fun is the starting game. at level three. The campaign starting at level three, and uh, what I did was, uh, I essentially uh, made it to where a short rest you need a healer's kit, so taking the DMG rule, uh, but a character can only have one kit on them at a time, so they're limited to how many the kits they can have on them per times they're actually at, like towns and things like that so it's it's more of like do you want to risk it and push forward or do you play the safe which most players play safe which is fine but some players want to risk it for the biscuit because that's what D&D is all about risking it for the biscuit indeed they do so that is what's been up with me uh but yeah uh the idea is put it up for a month see what players i can Uh, hoist away i would suggest also going to reddit slash r slash lfg posting your game there you will get far more traction probably Uh, i already just put it up today the the roll 20 thing can kind of get mired Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I I I wanted to look for my game because I was you're, like, all right. Well, I should say if you're not playing or if you're playing D and D, other games are pretty easily findable. Like, yeah, for Star Wars, there's only one page of games, so yeah. it's pretty easy to uh, locate. I one. went for it, and I did weekly games by Sunday with mature content that's free to play, along with only using voice. Had three pages. I was stuck on the end of the yeah. second page so i was like huh all right then yeah so but uh yeah i'll i'll take that uh advice then. reddit reddit uh, slash r slash but again LFG. i just yeah i i just put it up like i think four hours ago so oh so it, yeah it, it showed up i'm sure you'll get some traffic yeah hey y'all uh hello jackson are you yeah. on your phone or something i'm in my car yeah, that's what it sounds like. Uh, are you on your way to your house, or will you be playing mobile? Uh, no, I'll be, I'm on my way to my house. I'm just going to stop off at a drive through liquor store, and I'll be right there. Okay, that sounds... <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, well, then, I will, I will try and drag this out as much as possible so that uh, you have time to get yourself settled. Uh, that, and, and through the drive through liquor store appropriately. Mm. Yeah, you can't crash through the store. C- correct. Uh, we'll move on to Liam because Megan appears to have muted herself and doesn't care about us. Uh, hello. Liam, hello. How rude. Hello. Uh, how are you? And what has been going on with you this past week? Uh, I guess I'm doing well. It's been a bit of a rough week, but things are looking more up today. Uh, hmm. What can I say that would drag things out? Oh, I know. Uh, showing up way late to the party, I have suddenly, well, I have recently started playing Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> yes. Did you start when, like, the C- or the 2.0 started, or it was is it before more that? Recent? But... Before that, okay. I think it was after I heard the 2.0 was a thing. Right. But, sure. uh, yeah, so, uh, League of Legends with Blizzard characters? Yeah, I, I don't, I feel strange about Heroes of the Storm, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, cause it's like, it's objective based, right? And that makes it, that does make it different than other MOBAs I've played before. Uh, but it also kind of it has a lot of reliance upon like the maps and how good your actual team is from what I found is 
uh, what? Generally not, no. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have weird feelings about, uh, about Heroes of the Storm myself. I just realized also, I... don't worry about, don't worry about starting. It's going to take at least 20 minutes for me to get home. Oh, okay. All right. That's no problem. Well, um, we're missing other people anyway, are we? Uh, yeah. The, the only one we're really missing is Will, which he did not mention anything to me, so he might need a Will check. Um, yeah. He is offline, so the will check will not go through. <laughs> well, offline is better than away. Typically, if he is offline, that means he is uh, doing something else. If he is away, typically he is asleep. But we shall see. Sh- sh- shout, shout sure. we. Sure. Sure. Um, but anyway, uh, so are you enjoying your time, Liam, in, in Heroes of the Storm? Uh, I'd enjoy it a lot more if the butcher wasn't in there, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah that character is really, really hard. Um, a character I have a hard time with a little bit is Varian, too. Varian, like, it seems like he can just spam his invulnerability a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can. And it, to me, for, for, for my purposes, like, a lot of people don't can't time it right, and myself included, like, because he can use it so often... It's really hard to get things uh, appropriate on that. Uh, Liam, have you played Chromie? Not yet, no. Chromie is one of... Uh, I, I did kind of the same thing as you, where I stopped playing for a very long time. I was playing back, like, back in the beta, but I stopped playing for a very long time. And then I came back when I heard about like the 20 free heroes and 2.0 and all that other fun stuff. Um, and Chromie was one of the free heroes that I picked up. Uh, she's great. I love that character. She has, like, every, every single one of her abilities is kind of like a skill shot, almost. Yeah, I got that impression. I see people complain about her a lot, but, I mean, at least you actually have to do things like aim. Oh, yeah, no, it's not, it is not a mindless thing. Um, but, oh man. Butcher! Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the butcher's, uh, the butcher's hilarious when he literally just charges from halfway across the map and kills you. Um, yep. yep. Because, like, other characters that have a have a mechanic like that in other games, like a charge mechanic, typically, you, if, you, if you, like, are, let's say, oh, I don't know, Tracer, you could, like, blink away three times, and it would have a range on it. Not the Butcher. The Butcher will literally nope. just keep charging you until you die. Um, I remember one time I was Tracer, and the Butcher charged me, and you get that little symbol over your head, so you're fully aware of it. And I charged back behind the tower, and the butcher ran all the way down and around to charge me. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was like, this is not real life. And of course, he gets faster and faster the longer he charges. Yep. So pretty soon, he was just a fucking speeding bullet. Um, choo-choo. F- yeah, fucking choo-choo, motherfucker. That's, that is a correct term, I think. Uh, well, that's, that's awesome. Uh, anything else besides Heroes of the Storm, Liam? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, most of my other D&D games this week, so this is the only game I've had so far. Uh-oh. So, tragically, no further shenanigans to report on. Oh. Well, um, that means you can, uh, you, you'll have to get all of it out tonight. Like, you just have to get all of the RPG and role-playing out tonight in one big fell swoop so you can feel satisfied for the week. Clearly. <laughs> but I'm tired of giving the inspiration vote to the <laughs> Well, maybe you should do better. Yeah, no, I think that I think that is a clear step up your game moment. Um, <laughs> Brian, hello and welcome. I try, but you're too damn good. <laughs> uh, Brian, how have you been, sir? Uh, I was called in to work this morning. That's that's why I was slightly late today. Uh, which is. You know, never fun. No one likes going in on their days off. But whatever. What what are you gonna do? Certainly. Fuck them. That's what I do. Certainly, they do not like going in on their days off. I know. I certainly don't. That's why I don't do it. Because I am I am fortunately one of those people who can uh, simply just tell them no. <laughs> and yep. uh, and everything is fine then. Oops. Gotta do this. Well, lucky you. Uh, indeed, indeed. What else have you been doing, though, with your with your life? 
Uh, I got back into uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, yeah. It's like getting back into WoW. It's not something you're proud of. It's just something that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree 100% with basically all. It's Dota for me. That's that's Dota for me. Is uh, yep. the... When I start playing Dota again, I'm just like, yeah, sorry. I mean, I'm here now. Might as well, might as well do the thing. Yep. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Um, is there any is there any new content, f- or is it simply just a you wanted to play again moment? Oh, there's a whole bunch of new content because um, I haven't played it since the level cap was like sixty, and they've had like two expansions since then. I feel yeah. like it wasn't that long ago you were trying to get everybody to play though. Not uh, enough time for two wasn't. expansions, certainly. No, it uh, it wasn't that long ago, but uh, yeah, no, two expansions. Wow. Uh, it's it's a lot of end game content. Fucking a lot. Uh, Lucasfilm just pump just pumping out the the stuff, huh? Uh, it's Bioware, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, good. Are are you at least enjoying yourself? <laughs> yes. No. Yes. Unfortunately, so. Well. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know much what to say about that. Uh, as Star Wars. Yeah. I played it back when it was a subscription-based model. Um, mm. And then, mm. for some reason, I have a problem playing free-to-play MMOs. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I just like. They feel not as. Um, I don't know. If I'm not paying for it, I don't feel like I am entitled to anything in it. And so I feel uh, kind if, of... If you're not paying for this, you aren't entitled to anything in it. And that's another reason why, is it's a really bad model. I, I mean, I, and I know that there have been... Um, uh, there have certainly been MMOs that have done it right. Uh, Rift is one of the MMOs. So, for those of you who don't know what Rift is... Um, Rift oh, boy. fun. Uh, oh, boy. I... I get that conversation with me. Rift is the game that started uh my basically my streaming ever streaming ever was uh was in rift i was in uh the number two guild in the world um as their as their bard uh because in rift there are four uh there's dps tank healer support and bards are support healers um and i got to the point where I was actually the one writing the guides for like uh, in fact I was at once at one point contacted by the game's developers to uh, speak with them about some of the things regarding the class and stuff that I was playing and what I liked and what I disliked and what I thought could be improved upon and you know the different play styles of it uh, really super hardcore into it uh, needless to say and then it went free to play and for some reason my brain flicked a switch and was like this game isn't worth it anymore but I did hear that they had a really good model for their free to play Rift has a really good model for free to play because it's uh, just cosmetics and like shit for your house and stuff like that like yeah it's, like it- it's, not, it's not gear it's not progression Mm-hmm. You know, none of that shit. Yeah, Shot no, by the Star way. Wars is, uh, Star Wars, literally all of the late game content, besides the base story that the game came out with, is all, like, subs- uh, subscription locked. Right. So it's like, it's, Which... it, yeah, and, like, it's, it's terrible because, you know, and, and I, I can appreciate the World of Warcraft model where it's like, you pay a subscription to play our game. No, if Sandra butts, you pay a subscription. Yep. There's no well, and and now that's changed a little bit because they allow you to play up to what like level sixty now in WoW on a free uh, account. I think so, but it's like but, vanilla WoW. Basically. Yeah, and I feel like it is it is so much lower than what is actually possible in that game that everybody just pays for a subscription anyway. Um, yeah, that's that's I mean, basically how Star Wars is at this I point. I mean, yeah, when you get to level one hundred and ten, right? Wow, yeah, it's uh, not the so. same game. 
Um, I did find myself the other day having nothing to watch on Twitch, and I still follow a couple of WoW streamers, and I was like, I can't click on those streams anymore. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Uh, hmm. So at my job, I, I don't do a whole lot, right? I, I sit down and do pretty much nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I started watching Dexter on Netflix, and I'm on the end of season seven, and I started at the beginning of this week. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Also that. Uh, that doesn't sound physically possible. It was, it's been a good week. Uh, I only stopped after uh, season four ending, and then that was when it was on Showtime. And it was still airing on Showtime because it still wasn't coming out the, the seasons fast enough. Not just it, Netflix. It got buys. better after season four. That's the problem. I mean, all all the seasons were good beforehand. True. True. It's so just good. I just ended up stopped watching, and I mean, I picked up anime and other things. I'm pretty sure after that, I binge watched the shit out of uh, Last Airbender. And I killed that in three days, so that was fun. But That's you know, what? Back when the last Airbender, the Nickelodeon show, you know. I can hear Jackson saying something, but I'm not sure what he's actually saying. So oh, I, think he's I had him muted. Road raging. Oh, I thought he was I, saying oh, it's not an anime. Yeah, it's not an anime. But it is an anime. No, it's not. Also, God, God, wait. For Better flag. <laughs> I wasn't saying it was. I was just saying that I binge watched the shit out of it after Dexter. Uh, well, that's fantastic. But anyways, uh, I don't like Rift. I'll say that I didn't like Rift at launch. Didn't like it continuously. And you want to know why? Holy shit! I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That was actually really good timing. But, uh, uh, I didn't uh, hear. Dwarves. I didn't hear what your reason why was. Oh, dwarves. They don't look. They don't look right. That's my only complaint. <laughs> the dwarves uh, don't look right. I was just like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> this I could, isn't I the could dwarves see why, I love. I can see why you say that. Um, they they look goofy. Like, I don't know. They do look giant man childs. That's the, what they are. The game felt mechanically better than World of Warcraft. To me, uh, it, it for a very for, sure. for a very long time. I did like its mechanics. Um, yeah, I did that. The but the, the fights, aesthetically, holy crap! The fights in that rival, I, almost every single one of them rival my most memorable fights in World of Warcraft. And remember, I was like hardcore and WoW too. Like I number five yeah. paladin in the world. Like on progression, like a lot of PVE stuff for me. Um, mm. But PVE all the way. Uh, yeah, but like the especially the final boss fights in that game are in, in or in the dungeons are just far superior to anything that I've encountered still to this day. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, aside from that, I think we're forgetting about someone. Uh, we're, we're we're not forgetting, forgetting about uh, anyone because Jackson's driving. Uh, uh but, Megan, hi, hello. That's what I was getting at. Hello! <laughs> hi, hello. Uh, you found your unmute button. Uh, uh, yes. What kind of food were you receiving to put inside of your mouth? <laughs> um, I actually wasn't. I was on the phone. Sorry. Oh. <gasps> Let me see. Uh, well, <laughs> how have you been this week? Have you uh, acquired any more Nazi memorabilia? No, uh, and I didn't acquire Wait. that memorabilia. I just took a picture of that memorabilia, <laughs> sir. There's a big difference there. Uh, I think that needs to be stated. Uh huh. It's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, I the curiosity is still spark. Yeah, it's not worthwhile explaining it. That was last um, week. <laughs> I res I did. Acquire a new diploma yesterday, so that's fun. Hooray! <gasps> Hooray! Um, Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what 
else. Oh, speaking of getting pulled back into uh, games, uh, Stormblood is coming out for Final Fantasy XIV in June, and Did every you? streamer who I uh, who I watch has started to play it again to get prepared for that, and uh, I'm worried. Uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried for myself currently. Did you you you've played that? Oh my god, yeah. Oh god. Characters. oh god, we're gonna lose Jordan and Megan pretty soon. <laughs> I, I've never played, I never touched the game. Oh my god, it's so good. So good. Yeah, and then I had to stop myself for a bit, and I haven't played it since I beat the most recent expansion, and then everybody's playing it again. And <laughs> I can say something about that game is, I've, I've seen obviously the same thing, everybody playing it again. Um, when I click on it, it just looks like wow to me. Like, that was one thing about that was one thing to be said about Rift and uh, Star Wars and even like Star Trek Online. They dis made themselves distinct. God, when I look at Final Fantasy streams, I'm just like, this is World of Warcraft. I've actually that, mistaken watching videos thinking it was World of Warcraft. That, that's <laughs> a lie. Star Wars is literally World of Warcraft and Star Wars. But it, but I mean, it's not though. Like it it has a distinctive look. Like even the UI uh, yes. in Final Fantasy yes. looks f like fucking World of Warcraft. Like, what mods are you running? <laughs> yeah, I mean this game. I mean, again, I will say I will preface my current statement with I have never played a second of WoW. Okay. So just so maybe what I'm about to say is not. At really last, good. we found the pure one. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because you played Final Fantasy so, instead. I yeah. played this yeah, yeah, game yeah, totally. instead during the time period in my life in which I would have picked up one of these games. Um, but this game just seems so much more gorgeous, and the storyline in this game I actually fully care about. Like, I have never skipped a single cutscene. I have never, like, even skipped a dialogue in this entire yeah. playthrough of this well, game. Well, that's the draw like, of that particular game, right? Is that they have, like, a concurrent running story. Yes. Uh, in like, World of Warcraft, it is... makes... Like yeah, yeah. every and, has a has a purse like a, a reason to be there. It's not just like random NPC. You go. F I mean, there's still fetch quests and all that bullshit. It's it is you know yeah. what it is. But in um in World of Warcraft, it is very much based on where you are, right? Like in World of Warcraft, they still have the model of the story is within the zones. Each zone has its own story, and then each like yeah. raid is either tied to a story in that zone or tied to like the overall story. And there's really no deviation from that uh, in any regard. Um, I think that the games like Final Fantasy and the games like Star Wars did definitely change that model where they have much more of a concurrent story across all of the different uh, plays. Which, for me... a pretty cat lady. <gasps> for me, when I played Star Wars... Um, that was one thing that I really appreciated was me and my companion, just the two of us, like just doing the story. Um, I was never really much cool. interested in much else about the game. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I'm that's that's not true. Also... In the beginning, I tried to play a guardian because I play tanks in every MMO eventually, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't really like how the PVE felt, so I just kind of stopped after a while. It's it's gotten better it's good I'll to hear that. megan you were saying <laughs> uh i don't remember what i was gonna say but anyway no well and also when i was playing it fervently before i was in sam dodger right, and jp's right. guild and now i'm scared to log in and not be in their guild anymore <laughs> because i'm pretty sure it probably kicks me out at this point because i haven't played in like uh, maybe a year. <laughs> are they even still in the same guild, though? That's the real oh, question. Oh, they totally are. That guild still totally exists. 100%. Crown of Thorns still exists. <laughs> um, wow. And I was a freaking amazing black mage. You know? But now I'm probably nothing. I'm probably nothing. And now I'm just... Why like... <laughs> am I not surprised <laughs> Megan was a black mage? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was obvious. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played not a DPS, so just saying. Trying <laughs> Aelin right now. <laughs> True. 
I mean, in that type of game. Anyway, I, that's all I have to share. Anyway, that's it. Awesome. Um, my week has been. What did I do this week that was particularly interesting? Uh, fucking ignore me. So this week, uh, I mean, mostly I had you muted. Right. I actually, I actually don't have you. I don't have you muted right now. But I'm going to talk about my week because we've wasted about hopefully closer to 20 minutes, and you'll just be home, and we can we can hear you proper. Yeah, I'll be home in about uh, 10 minutes. Perfect. When you when you get there, we will hear you proper and uh, get your input on the week. Um, yeah, go ahead, mute me. Fucking mute me. Well, now I did. Uh, so. <laughs> Wait, is somebody talking? Right, exactly. Um, (laughs) (laughs) He's so mad! (laughs) I muted him like the second I heard he was in the car. I keep going in and out between the mute, and it's so damn funny. Um, (laughs) So, we got to play Samurai this week, which was super fun. Um, glad to be glad to play some more samurai. Uh, as usual, I almost died. Uh, but Will, who's not here, uh, did technically die. Talk shit. Um, but I saved him. But uh, but we were able to save him at the last moment. Um, so that was fun. Um, what else happened this week? Nothing particularly interesting, I don't think. Uh, except for uh. Perhaps the most important news is I've started recruitment again for my Star Wars game. Uh, or I should say recruitment actually for my Star Wars game. Uh, and I have been pleasantly surprised by the uh, talent that has contacted me. Um, in addition to the diversity. Uh, I knew when I kind of sh- was aiming for an earlier time frame that I may get uh, some Europeans that are interested in uh, but I did not expect the amount. Um, so Where can I submit my application? I'm super excited. Uh, I mean, the same way you would normally submit any application, and I'll decide whether or not you deserve it. Um, so. Uh, but yes, that's going to be exciting. Um, it will not be, however, starting until probably sometime in early to mid-July. Um just because of my personal schedule will not kind of allow me to do it until then. Uh, but there you have it. I don't know any of anything else. So, uh, did you did you see what we need to get that I sent you? Uh, yeah, I saw the matching <laughs> tattoos that you want me to get. Yes, uh, I did. I did see that. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, I'm down. Uh, we should, we no. should do that. <laughs> I just thought that they were funny. For those that are un- uninitiated, there you go. If you don't, listen, uh, don't, don't pretend like you like RPGs if you don't recognize what those are, okay? Where should I be seeing these? Uh, have them on yeah. stream. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they are, uh... They're the transport pyramids from Divinity. No. Uh, and and as you as you may or may not be aware, uh, they are. Uh, Megan and I play a lot of Divinity, so. Yeah, it was real fun watching that. Here, there you go. Um. So, of which uh, we probably will play tomorrow, but. Yay! Uh, Wait, did I miss that? You did, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, that's exciting. Speaking of exciting, uh, we left off on a pretty exciting moment last week. Um, that we did. And and just for, for everybody's reminder, let's just pop everybody over to here. Uh, so we were kind of doing a, a two-fold uh, uh, 
session here where we were bouncing back and forth between the kind of drawn out battle that was happening um, up in the north and then the uh, intrigue and lore that was happening in the south with Aelin and Arkady and then the other four of you being embroiled in this this combat with the um, with the the Norse the men from Norska uh, and also this this individual uh, who we now know the name of um, a cold hellbrass uh, as we all can see at the very last uh, thing here um, and he he seemed to uh, pose a formidable figure to the party. Um, riding on his three-headed beast. He descended onto the battlefield and kind of wrecked some shit up and then uh, retreated when the sound of the uh, war horns of the bear riders of Kislev appeared. Uh, he took his leave and departed. Uh, and it was essentially at that point that the battle was won. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to we're going to have a little bit of a fast forward a couple of couple of days um, because we kind of know what was going on where you guys were going to clean up the battle and then message were going to be sent to you that the the rest of the army was going to meet you um, in Grimmenhagen right here for those that don't know and so we're going to go very quickly to uh, the immediate aftermath what's going on there and then what's going on back at the camp with everybody else. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to hide all of these things. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, fantastic. But we're going to need to deal with our puppies, so I'll get, get them over there so we can deal with them in a second. Uh, and also, as we can see, um, we've taken, we've taken some injuries here. Uh. Not only from not only you guys have taken some injuries, but also your troops have taken some injuries. Uh, Quiet. Let's get everybody over here to Grimm and Hagen. Uh, so the immediate aftermath of the battle kind of went thusly. Uh, as the bear riders charged in, the men were put into full retreat. Um, a cold took off on his three-headed beast. Um, the the dire hounds, like the hellhound things, um, they kind of melted into the into the shadows as well in retreat. And there was some more slaughter and stuff, but it's not super important that we detail everything out there. Um, and the battle was won, although not without losses. Um, in fact, quite heavy losses uh, on on the side of the um, the party because uh, you've lost almost half of your cavalry uh, Cree. Um, as you can see there, your your cavalry was quite injured in the battle because they kind of, you guys were kind of the full the frontal assault, right? You guys were kind of the the thing that everybody was drawn to. Um, yeah. The knights have taken a few injuries, but they are obviously much more resilient. Um, but we're, we lost, I think, four knights in that battle because we were at ninety five and now we're at ninety one. So yeah, so we've lost four four more valiant knights and their steeds have fallen. Um. But the worst loss, I think, to the to the um, the party or to the the army was the warhounds because in the immediate aftermath of their battle, when all of you are resting and recovering and, and doing all of that, um, the hounds have have begun to uh, die off. Um, it seems like whatever is festering inside of them is reducing their their constitution and. Um, most of the dogs who are injured in any way by the other the, the hellhounds have succumbed to like uh, illnesses and disease and that kind of stuff. Um, and so they're going to take lots more damage over the course of the next couple of minutes of roleplay. Um, but maybe there's a way to mitigate that. Who knows? That's something that we can definitely search for. Uh, so for the four of you that were embroiled in this battle... Um, the men have routed the the ones who are spry enough are chasing them down and cutting them down where they stand but they're in full rout um so it's better to collect yourselves and take stock of your your injuries at this point than it is to do anything else and some of you are also quite injured uh if we recall correctly from last week so 
I think that it's important to perhaps start with that. What's everybody's immediate recovery action when the battle subsides and we've completed in victory, I'll bet a hard-won victory is upon you? Like, is this the direct, like, direct I'm... aftermath? Or is this, like, days later? So, there will be days that pass during this montage, but I want to know, like, what your first action is after the battle. Well, I suppose I'd actually go up to uh, Groundberg, I believe is his name. Yeah, Lord uh, Groundberg. Um, so, when you find Lord Groundberg, right? Because once you, once you meet up with, like, the rest of the forces, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you find Lord Groundberg, who I think I actually accidentally deleted his token, but this will, this will now be him. Um, when you find Lord Groundberg, uh, he appears to have taken some minor injuries himself as well, um, because he kind of led the charge, uh, against the, like, bulk of the forces, um, and so you probably find him, like, uh, like, dismounted from his horse, maybe sitting on, like, a log or a stump, um, getting his arm bandaged up by one of his men. Um, and as you come up, he kind of rises to greet you, and you can see he kind of winces in pain a little bit. You see he's got some bandages along his side as well. Um, yeah. and, uh, he gets up and he says, Ah, Lady Fairheart, it is good to see that you made it through the day. And I... Uh, calm demeanor she says well of course I did I had and she gestures towards Farron I had him as well as the brave men that fought with us yeah and he, he nods and he says yes yes and all of the men fought valiantly today and the hounds and the lizard men as well never have I seen such ferocity from these Beast Riders. It was truly a sight to behold. I hope that you were able to witness it yourself. Unfortunately, I believe I was too busy slewing scores of Norsemen. Yeah, and you see him, he kind of smiles, and um, he bends down and picks up a goblet like off of the, the stump he was, he was sitting on, and he says, Aye, and I'll toast to that. And he takes a big swig out of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, he's just chit chatting away with, uh, Lord Groundberg. Okay. Um, are you gonna have, like, others. anybody perform first aid on you? Uh, because you took some injuries as well. Yeah, there are, there are mean, probably some healers, not healers specifically, but, like, there are probably some men who are trained in how to bandage folks, uh, with yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, mechanically, this would be the time that you would second wit. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to second, I feel like, that's that's totally a thing. I feel like because she hasn't, and I feel like it's a calming uh, breathing. So it's whatever. Which just okay. do that a yeah. while. Fine, go for it. Thirteen hit points, excellent. And yeah, I mean, I did take damage, but it seems like she is recovering well uh, from it. She's you know probably got bruises and things of that sort, but she isn't fair. Farron's fucked up. Yeah, and I think we see Farron, like, he's been walking with you, and I think, like, he's taken uh, Lord Groundberg's place on the on the log that he was sitting on, and is being attended to right now as well. Because um, he took he took some nasty hits from that guy. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who was no slouch himself. Yeah. Yeah, that dude. That if dude. either one of you had been alone, it might have been much worse for the wear. I mean, yeah, I I probably would have been a lot better off compared to Farron, but that's what they get those two crits. Indeed, and it's it's also also remember that none of you have had a long rest in you know almost almost twenty four hours at this point. Um, yeah, so you guys are are definitely like maybe not mechanically exhausted right now, but but thematically exhausted. Yeah, definitely. I would I would narratively say that. You all are kind of running on fumes at this point. Um, mm. If you don't take a long rest before doing like another thing, like you know, 
charging off into the brush or whatever, uh, I would probably impose mechanical exhaustion on you. But since the kind of the yeah. dulling of the um, of the battle has or the battle has subsided at this time, we can we can avoid that. Um, yeah. So what about what about Cree and Hannibal? Uh, what are you guys doing? Where are you at? What do you, what's the what's the plan here? The last of my shit up. So Cree go first. Uh, Kree is more than a little upset that, uh, his, his new arch enemy was able to get away. Huh? Um, he, he had put a hurting on Kree and, uh, and knocked for yeah, that Yeah, I was matter. gonna say, a knock too, right? Knock took some hits as well. Yeah, it's, it's not very appreciated. Um, but he needs to recoup his losses, he needs to go and gather up the rest of the lizard men and get them going on recovery more than himself he's not that badly hurt okay so yeah you and you and uh you and Noct have taken some some bumps and some bruises but you're you're still in you're still in commander mode where you're um gathering up the forces and you know reorganizing and taking stock of the dead and that kind of stuff yeah okay cool um what about you hannibal or are you still bringing stuff up? Just give me literally. Okay. Um, so while while you guys are all kind of uh, you know clustered around or whatever, um, no no one has really addressed these newcomers. Um, it's clear they are not hostile to you, uh, and this is you know this is the part where I was hoping Will was awake. Um, and I'm here. Okay, fantastic. So what are you doing during your recovery? So immediately I go and find what's his name, the Groundberg guy. The what? I'm sorry. The other general with. Oh, Lord Groundberg. Yeah. So you go I there, and Morella and Farron are also there. Yeah, I go, I'm basically trying to find out like what our loss is. Yeah, and I think that he begins like giving stock. Um, the lizardmen were hit heavy, uh, and that's also probably the point where he says. Um, uh, probably says uh it, it appears the hounds are have taken ill to some of their injuries uh, we do not have appropriate medical supplies to treat them obviously we left in some haste we would have to wait for the teams to arrive before we can treat them properly but as it stands right now the men tell me that most will not make it through the night or mm. he actually says through the day because it's actually like morning time right I'll go investigate th this supposed illness. And maybe I can find a way to make them the last till help gets here. Okay, yeah. So you, you head off to do that. And I think we, we stay on Lord Groundberg for a moment. Um, and uh, he turns to you, Morella, because um, you're, you know, you're standing there and he's like, So tell me, what do you make of that great beast that descended from the sky? great beast yes surely you saw it the three-headed beast and the rider of it I unfortunately was not close enough to engage him myself but I saw that your friend uh, I believe Cree is his name I believe he engaged the foe I was wondering if you were there as well I know that you prefer to fight on foot as opposed to horseback Unfortunately, I think I was too far away. I heard the sound of distant thunder. Perhaps that was him. Yes, yes. My men tell me that as his blade fell, he caused the skies to rumble. I would call them cowards if I were so inclined to do it, but they do not appear to be telling lies, at least. That is true. Though, unfortunately, again, I don't think I really saw much of it. Uh, I was too engrossed with uh, saving the lives and fighting for my own, in my front. Yeah, and I think that's probably the first time he kind of like looks over you, and he probably sees Farron too, like all fucked up as he is, and he's like, "Ah, it seems you were beset by by strong opponents. Tell me of them." There was one in particular that, dare I say, almost matched me in prowess. 
That is certainly a... something not to be taken lightly. Let us pray that there is only one now of you, and that if there are any more, they work for us. Agreed. It's not fun going mm -hmm. against someone of my prowess. Or at least close. <laughs> and and I think he says, he's like, I would only wish it upon my enemies, certainly. Yes. Well, very well. Although, we have two courses. I wish to know more about this man who rides the three-headed beast, or he looked too large to even be a man. And someone should perhaps, and he kind of like gazes off towards like the the kind of reforming ranks of these bear riders. Um, and he's like, perhaps we should thank our well-timed allies. What do you say? Agreed. But first, and she, her head snaps at Hannibal uh, before uh, pulling him in, like putting her, her arm around his shoulder and like pulling him in Fuck and like on. lifting him up like off his feet for a split moment. But this man, mm. you delivered a much tactically superior strategy. Well done, Hannibal. I knew you were smart. Didn't think you were smart with, within the fields of battle, though. Yeah, I think Lord Lord Grammar raises his goblet again. He says, "Here, here, to General." <laughs> and I think he stumbles for a second. He's like, "Ah, Solomon. perhaps it is. It is perhaps not appropriate to use your full name, but to General uh, Solomon. May he lead us to many more victories in the future." And he takes a big swig of his goblet. Sure. And you are right. We need to contact those bear riders. Maybe they... I'm a little bit wondering how they got here. <laughs> she had a look at you, Hannibal. Well, obviously on the bears, Hannibal. <laughs> I look at Morella. You you hear <laughs> Farron sitting on the log. Ha! That's it. That's all you hear from Just the single ha. Sounds like somebody is rubbing off on you. Oh, come now, I've had a charming tongue here and there. But come, let us go meet these bear riders. Fine, fuck it, let's go. Um, yeah, so the two of you are headed down there, and I think Lord Groundberg says, I, well, I can trust you to handle that. I will go find the Cree and see what he knows about this creature. And he heads off in that direction to find Cree. Um, but the two of you, uh, with Farron kind of bandage and maybe even, like, um, his arm is probably in a sling as well. Uh, like, you know, a crude sling. Yeah. They make their way down there. Um, and along the way, I make small talk with Farron. What the fuck happened to you? He's like, oh, oh, well, you wouldn't believe this man with his axe. He it was beset upon us, he was. Great mighty blows, but the fair lady here, she was... She was able to take him down with a few swift strokes. Uh, yeah. I know, I faced a tough one myself. That fucking, what's his name? Hellbrass. Truly, that is his name. Who? Okay. The man who rides the three-headed beast. Yeah. What do you know of him, Hannibal? Um... Can I make... I saw him use magic, right? Uh, certainly it was magic of a sort. Yes, absolutely. Could, could I make an arcana check to try to determine what route his magic came from? Sure. Like whether it was divine in nature sure. or yeah. came. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. All right, what do I... Arcana, right? Yep, you can roll arcana. That's fine. Identifying types of magic would be arcana still. All right. Yeah, 21. That's a good roll. Um... It certainly did not give you the feel of arcane magic. Um, perhaps divine or maybe even nature magic is more appropriate here. Because there's the three the three different types, right, uh, in this world. There's, there's natural magic, there's divine magic, and then there's arcane magic. But what I also um, know enough about, like, those who use nature magic know they wouldn't be decked out in full fucking plate mail. 
He, he, I mean, yes and no, certainly that would be weird, but also he rides a great three-headed beast. Uh, oh, you know, you're right. So that. there's, like, there's a weird, like, maybe yes, maybe no there, right? Yeah. So, so that's that's why I, was, I specifically said it's not arcane, but you, the other types you'd have to guess at, I think. So I say, well, it's hard to say, because for one thing, I can't imagine to, that he... You can tame a creature like that without magic. So he's obviously some type of spell slinger or caster. He doesn't have spells like mine, though. Um. So you you hear a you hear Farron in a very small voice says. Again, you say his name is Hellbrass. Yeah. I know this name. It is... It is one taken by some of the mountain folk near my home. Enlighten us, Farron. Regale us with your stories, Bard. Helbras is... Sing it, please. Let's say... Uh, I, I know no songs of them, only stories of their deeds. They are said to be of a wilder folk. Perhaps some even say that they are part giant, perhaps. I would attest to Lord Granberg's statement of him being so large. What I do know of Hellbrass, though, is they are seen as perhaps the more vicious of the clans that live in the mountains. If they are here, or at least if this Hellbrass is here, it does not bode well for anyone. Tell me, Farron. Do they bleed just as easily? I, I think he kind of, like, he kind of shrugs, and he's like, I have never engaged them myself, my lady, but I would assume they are still mortal, if that is what you ask. She nods, as they, well, put it in your mind that you'll most likely meet this man again, whether either in face to face, of course, standing beside me, or perhaps from afar. I think he says, I would prefer it if I were not face to face with a Hellbrass. Then I would suggest standing behind me when that time comes. Have no fear, my lady. Behind you is where I will stay. <coughs> um, yeah. so it's I figured this talk gets yeah, us to the bear riders. Yeah, so, so you get down to the... Uh, you get down to the like kind of the edge of where your men are and there's a there's a divide between where your army is and where the bear riders are and as you get there um a couple of the bear riders begin like uh coming forward and you see that um there's two men who are flanking a woman uh and the woman has very distinct she's she's pale um she has like that kind of fiery reddish hair uh, and I think that you recognize very quickly that she looks almost kin to uh, Kira, f- one of uh, the spear maidens that Arkady has, uh-huh. and because um, she is she is also a halfling, by the way, uh, and yeah. she dismounts, um, and she's got like a large kind of like lance that's she like attaches to the side of her her mount and. As she, like, walks forward, you see her, the giant bear form kind of, like, kind of, like, slowly watch her as she, as she proceeds forward, and she's like, halt right there. What's up? In the name of the Ice Queen, who do I have the pleasure of addressing? Hannibal D. Solomon and Morella Fair, and that's Farron. And is it you who leads this army here? I'm one of the generals, yes. Tell me, who do you represent? We represent the Empire. That is well. That's it. 
We are here seeking the army of the Empire. Is this all that you have? And you oh, can see, like, no. when she does that, she, like, kind of looks almost like uh, hoping for the, the answer of, oh, hell no, right? Yeah, I say that, oh, hell no. Yeah, and she goes, that is good. For what I know we are marching into, we will need many more than this thousand or so men. Take me to whoever leads the the host. I must speak with him or her immediately. And give him or her the Ice Queen's regards. She's a, he, she's asking to be led to KL. Yeah. You could assume whatever you want. Yeah, that's what I mean, she's asking not to Cahill. She doesn't know who's leading. I certainly uh, is, is she talking about Cahill? Yeah, when you say that she just glares at you and she's like no one is technically in charge of everyone. It's a council of sorts. Part of the council is here. The other half, essentially, is with the other, the larger force. We are going to meet them at Grimmenhagen, I believe. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, because technically all you guys are, like, over here, right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, she, uh, she probably, she gives you, like, a curt nod and says, Yes, Grimmenhagen, we passed through there on our way over here. How's it looking? Appears to be like any small village in the Empire. By the way, before I forget, and then Hannibal looks at her seriously. Thank you. Um, and, uh, I think she, like, she she's taken aback a little bit, and she looks at you and she just, like, gives a nod, and she goes, You are most welcome, Hannibal Solomon. It is it is only my wish that we had arrived sooner so that we may slay more of these vile vermin. These Norse uh she gives she says a curse actually, and it's probably like right? I spit. Um I lift up my mask slightly and spit. And I think I think that Farron probably like leans forward and says, She means the Norska. Um And uh and she says, uh, very well. We will escort you there so that we may await this the rest of this council, as you say. Um, Very well. And she Mind gives. If I ask you. A yeah, go ahead. Though, real quick. Do you have any healers? Um, she says nothing more than field bandages, if that is what you desire. It appears that our dogs. I sent our dogs to fight against theirs, and their dogs were a fair bit more nasty. It appears the dogs have been afflicted with an illness. Um. She kind of, like, she nods and she says, We are adept at handling these types of diseases. I will have some of our, some of our lore masters look over them. I thank you. Just be sure to tell your men not to touch the bears. I'll make sure that word gets passed along. Yeah, and she kind of, like, turns around and walks back and, you know, clambers up into her saddle again. And she gives a little yip-yip and turns the bears around and they go walking back to their host and they begin like kind of forming a, like a line to like kind of shield the injured because they don't have very many injuries if any at all um, to kind of shield like you're injured as you guys begin to travel towards Grimmenhagen. Alright, um, I yell out, John! I don't know if I brought him or not. Um, I think that you did but you very quickly lost track of him. Yeah, so uh, I call him or I, I use um no, I use Dane to spread I was going to say, yeah, Dane's probably going to have to go find him. Um, yeah, I, I tell Dane to go tell John to don't touch the fucking bears. Yeah, okay. All right, no problem. So Dane will go about flitting to try and find John, who's, I'm sure, okay and hiding somewhere within the ranks. Um, yep. So I think that with that over, uh, Cree, we see you kind of, you know, you've, you've got the men, you're, you're tending to the injured. Um, uh, and we see... Lord Groundberg approach you, and he begins um, speaking with you about the the entity. And so I think he approaches and he says, "Hi, Cree. Tell me, what was that armored man on that beast? Did you perhaps find out any information about him when you engaged him?" We've learned a couple things after trading blows, though we seem to shift him off like nothing. His name is Acold Hellbrass. He shouted it to the skies as he fled this field. Aye. 
Well, that is certainly a name that I will be passing around to the men to be on the lookout for, although he seems to be hard to miss. Flying on the monstrosity that he is, yeah, he's hard to miss. Ah, yes. And what do you know of this beast? Were you able to identify it? No. All I know is it's it's wrong. It is not a creature of nature. It is something of chaos. Yes, I gathered as much myself. Perhaps that is for men and women smarter than us to figure out. Come, let us get our descriptions and men in order. We travel to Grimmenhagen. We've received word that the rest of the forces will meet us there. Gather the men. We ride as soon as possible. Let's... Yeah. And so, with the two of you, um... With, with the mention of the other host, uh, we, we flash over to Arcadian Aelin. 